Currently $28 trillion in debt. Whose fault is it? Republicans? Democrats? The answer is yes. Yes on both fronts. Both parties are responsible for the debt. Now, one side is honest about it. One side will tell you they don't give a fig about the debt. The debt be damned. We're for a new monetary theory. Spend as much as you've got, borrow as much as you can, and somehow we're going to combat the influence of China by borrowing more money from China. Doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense, but that's where we are. So we have before us a bill that will simply add to the debt. We will go further in debt. You might make the argument that we're actually less strong as a nation the more in debt we are. Where's the opposition? Now, there's no opposition on one side of the aisle, and on the other side, there's feigned opposition. Republicans will feign opposition to the debt, and they will say, well, yes, we care about the debt, and the other side spends too much and borrows too much. And you hear Republicans throughout the land campaigning against the debt, only to come to Washington and vote for most of the debt. So what we end up with is a $28 trillion debt. We actually borrow more in a month than we used to borrow in a year. In March of this year, we borrowed $660 billion in one month. The proposals for spending are alarming. We have spent and borrowed more in the last two years than we did during World War II. There are going to be repercussions of so much borrowing in such a short period of time. We are seeing a misallocation of capital throughout the economy. We are seeing a grossly inflated stock market. We are starting to see inflation throughout the supply chain, throughout the economy. There are going to re be repercussions. The question we have to ask ourselves are, are we willing to look at the example of countries like Venezuela or Zimbabwe that completely destroyed their currency? People say that couldn't happen in America. It largely hasn't happened because we've been the reserve currency of the world. We've been fortunate. People describe it as having the cleanest shirt in a closet full of dirty shirts. The dollar is weakened by such extravagant spending, and yet people still cling to the dollar because the other currencies are weaker. But this bill simply adds more to the debt. And we say we're going to combat China through this bill, but we're going to combat China by increasing a department of government, the National Science Foundation, that is actually probably one of the most wasteful agencies in government. William Proxmire was a conservative Democrat from Wisconsin back in the 60s and 70s. He started an award called the Golden Fleece Award. One of the first awards he gave Order was, in the chamber, please. One of the first awards that uh, William Proxmire gave, gave, the Golden Fleece Award, was an award for a study about what makes people fall in love. You'd think with the lampooning through the years, the ridiculous lizards on treadmills of Panamanian frogs, that after a while people would say, instead of giving this agency that is so full of waste and ridiculous studies, maybe instead of giving them more money, we should give them less money. So perhaps if we wanted them to reform, we would say to the National Science Foundation, instead of increasing your budget 68%, why don't we reduce their budget 10% and say behave better? Why don't we reform how they pick their committees? So, for example, if you want to study... You need order in the chamber. If you want to study cocaine and you want to study Japanese quail using cocaine and you want to know if they're more sexually promiscuous, do you know how you get approval for your funding? You call up your other buddies that study cocaine and animals and you say, hey, I've got this great new study. Would you guys like to join in it? And, and be my peer review committee. So it's actually the ridiculous studies that we discover, they're being voted on by people who are selected by the people doing the studies. So what they do is they select other people with ridiculous studies and they say, we'll vote for yours if you vote for mine. So how do we get you know, a half a million dollars st spent studying Panamanian frogs? They want to know whether or not the mating call of the country frogs in Panama is different than the mating calls of the city frogs. Well, coming from a rural state, I can tell you the mating calls of the country folk is always different than the city folk. We could have polled the audience. Are, co are quail more sexually promiscuous on cocaine? I think we could have polled the audience. So the thing is, there could be some reforms. So for example, as much as I'm opposed to government spending, there are some important diseases. 
let's say Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, why wouldn't we make the committees for the National Science Foundation, why wouldn't we make the committees have someone on there from one of the big five diseases? Why wouldn't we put a taxpayer advocate on there? Why wouldn't we have some sort of inspector general process so this doesn't happen? You know, we have to review this. This is an, ac an academic point. We've now discovered that the NIH was funding the Wuhan lab. So we should have oversight on what happens. But after 50 years of abuse at the National Science Foundation, we're still studying, will people eat ants to combat climate change? Seriously, that was a study. How many ants will people eat? And how many ants do you have to eat to reduce the global warming by one degree? It's a lot of ants. But the thing is, is that's the kind of studies that we're having coming out of here, and we don't make it any better by increasing their budget. If you are a wasteful agency and we give you more money, we'll get more waste. If you want less waste, and this goes not only for this, it goes for the military, it goes for any other agency of government. If you give any agency more government money, you'll get more waste. You won't get less. So the, the, the cocaine was actually NIH, not NSF. NIH has got some of the same problems. One of the ones from the NIH in recent years was $2 million to see if someone in the, in the buffet line, when you're going through the buffet or Luby's cafeteria, and someone in front of you sneezes on the food, are you more or less likely to eat the food? Two million bucks. Now look, if you want to come to me and say we should study Alzheimer's disease, I've got open ears, heart disease, diabetes, but if you want to study whether somebody sneezing on the food makes you more or less likely to eat the food, that's just ridiculous. The American people know it's ridiculous. If the American people could see what we're voting on and say, oh, we're going to combat China by giving more money to the most wasteful agency in the world. And where's the money coming from? Is it out of a surplus? Can we go over to the Federal Reserve and, and open this big safe? There's a big cache of money. Is there a rainy day fund? Is there a savings account that we can tap into to say we're going to have government-funded research to combat China? Well, no, we have to borrow the money from China. Think of the irony. We borrow the money from China to put it into technology. We complain about Chinese socialism, which is the government running everything and spending all the money. And so what are we going to do? The same thing. We're going to borrow the money from China, and then we're going to have government-directed research that we all say, oh, socialism is the government directing this. Then we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to be stronger than China. A good example of how, and this is sort of a technical detail of how the committee process works and how grant funding works. There was $700,000 allotted from the National Science Foundation for autism. Look, I, I know parents who have kids with autism. I can be convinced that the federal government can be involved in some way. But the $700,000 that was allotted for autism was then taken and subcontracted to a bunch of eggheads who wanted to listen to a tape of Neil Armstrong on the moon. So if you're as old as me, you can remember being in school and seeing the crackly black and white pictures coming back from the moon and hearing Neil Armstrong say, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, or did he say, one small step for a man? So a group of researchers, and I use the term loosely, at the National Science Foundation got $700,000 of autism money to study one word, the preposition A. Did Neil Armstrong use the letter A, or the word A, or did he not? So they studied, and they were diligent. They listened to this 20-second clip over and over and over again. I think it took them a year of listening to this. They wrote reports and, and, and had findings. And you know what their conclusion was in the end? We just don't know. We just don't know. Was it one small step for man or one small step for a man? So this is something you could fix. Before throwing and heaping more borrowed money on the National Science Foundation, maybe we could say you can't subcontract money that was meant for Alzheimer's to ridiculous research. How would you stop it? Maybe you would have a committee that reviews the grants that has someone on the committee from one of the big five diseases that actually says, should we be spending the money on autism or should we spend the money on Neil Armstrong's statement on the moon? Should we be spending it on this versus diabetes? See, everything's a trade-off. 
everybody comes to Washington, and if you ask them, you know, the people who advocate for Alzheimer's or diabetes or cancer, are you getting enough money? And when I tell them, the autism parents, that their money went to study Neil Armstrong, you know what I get? Dropped jaws and people going, you've got to be kidding me. My, my mother or father is dwindling away from Alzheimer's, and they, they spent money studying Neil Armstrong? Did he say one step, giant step for man, or one small step? This is uh, lizards on the treadmill. Dr. Coburn was a senator here for a long time, and he liked to talk about waste, as I do. And so this is a decade ago, maybe more, that uh, Senator Coburn was on the floor, and he would talk about lizards on a treadmill. I think his was lizards underwater on a treadmill. or No, no, it was, it was shrimp on a treadmill, I think. But they've got lizards on treadmill. They've got shrimp. They've got crawfish on treadmill. But think about it, really. We are a big, proud country, but we are a trillion dollars in debt before we get to all the extra stuff. Before we get to all the COVID bailouts, we're a trillion dollars in debt just from the institutional expenses of the country. So we bring in about $3 trillion in revenue, and we spend about $4 trillion. Of the money that we bring in, $3 trillion is a lot. We could spend that on a lot of good things, but we, we can't simply just say we're going to spend it on you know, lizards on a treadmill, that somehow we have enough money to do that. So of the expenses that we have, most of the money is consumed by Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, food stamps, and the military, and then a variety of welfare programs. But that consumes a trillion dollars more than comes in. So we've been meeting over the last year and just spending extra money beyond the trillion dollar deficit. So we have a trillion dollar deficit just from our ordinary expenses. And then we add to that, you know, a couple trillion here for COVID last year, a couple trillion more. We're going to do a couple trillion more for free college, free daycare, free this, free that. But it's not free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. There is nothing in this world that you will get for free. You will either have the future paying for it. In order in the chamber. You will either have the future paying for it, our kids and our grandkids paying for it, or you will pay for it through inflation, or you pay for it through default. And you can default in a dramatic way through the destruction of a currency, or you can default in a gradual way through price inflation. As it is, we're starting to see the price inflation take off. There are people concerned about inflation that's already in the stock market and where this goes from here. But I don't think this bill makes us stronger. In fact, I think the Chinese sit back and, you know, hold their hand up and sort of titter and laugh at America, thinking they're going to be stronger by borrowing more money from China. So I, I just don't think it makes us any stronger at all. I think it makes us weaker. And it would be one thing if it weren't being so horribly wasted. Lizards on a treadmill. So they get the lizard on a treadmill, and then they have active x-rays to look at its joints. They were curious as to why a lizard waddles. So have you ever seen a lizard or an iguana? They walk funny. They waddle. So why do they waddle? You know, what do their joints look like in x-rays? And so we spent, you know, $1.5 million studying lizards on a treadmill.